Hi everybody. Today I wanted to share with you really quickly a great machine learning tool I discovered. It's called ATM, which stands for Auto-Tune Models. It's brought to us by the fine folks at MIT in collaboration with Michigan State University. And really what it does for us is it allows us to give us our data as a CSV file, and it'll report the right classifier as well as the parameters to use for that classifier. So if you've been in machine learning at all, hopefully this is apparent why this would be really helpful. This video is really only intended to help us get up and started with it. Um, once you successfully run an experiment, you'll no doubt want to learn about all the sweet features that come with it. And so you'll probably want to check out their GitHub page, as well as the Read the Docs section, to really learn about all the really powerful tools that come with it. I am working on Windows, as you may have noticed, and so I find it really helpful, and what I'll be using in this video is to have Ubuntu on Windows 10. In addition, I have Anaconda on top of Ubuntu on top of Windows 10. And now these links, as well as the ones before, will be in the description box below. So I encourage you to check them out, if, especially on Windows 10, if you need to. So that being said, I'm gonna actually go over to my GitHub page and share a script with you. And the script I wanna share with you is called atmsetup.sh. You can right click on it, save link as, and it'll save it as a shell script. Or we can open it up and you can simply copy and paste this into your own VI or Vim editor or whatever works for you. Now what the script does is check out specific versions of ATM as well as one of the major packages ATM uses, BTB or Baytune. And the reason that we go through this step is that sometimes these two packages are out of sync and that kind of breaks everything. And so the script will be really helpful in making sure that you can get up and running right away without you know, having to configure anything yourself, but it will have the drawback of maybe not being the most current version of either ATM or Baytune. But you know, sometimes you just want things to work. It will also create a Conda virtual environment for you and install all the appropriate packages. And really, this is, a, I think, a pretty big convenience script uh, that I hope you can take advantage of. If not, you can always follow the instructions on ATM's GitHub itself. So here I've downloaded it and I moved it to my desktop. We can see it's atmsetup.sh. So we're gonna run it by typing source ATM setup and I hit enter. Now it's going to give me a warning that I already have an environment named that, but that's okay. And another thing I like to point out, you may have noticed, there are some sudo commands in this script. If you do not have sudo privileges on your machine, then uh, you'll have to comment those out. Before we run our first experiment, I really like to point out the configuration file, which is how we customize this for our own needs. And to do that, um, I'm gonna jump over to Notepad++. You can most definitely use VI or Vim if you're more comfortable with that. I'm gonna make this big. So in our config.py file inside of our ATM lowercase directory, we can see the defaults, including the training path, which is obviously gonna be pretty important to us. Right now it's pointing to pollution1.csv. This is one of the sample data files that are provided when you download ATM. And it's how we should store our data for our analysis. Um, basically, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a sample on every row with the feature in every column and the final column being the, the class or label. And the label can be a string or a number or whatever you need it to be. Next, on line 125, we see the methods. By default, it will run log regression, decision tree, and KNN. There are lots more options, however, so if we scroll down, so we can see on line 370, we have some method options. We have a quite a number of them anyways. And so you could simply add all of these if you want to, if you have the time and you really want to force it to see what's going on. Or if you're running on short time, you can specify to only run a subset of those. So let's go back to our defaults. Line 123-ish, I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we'll leave these three classifiers for now, but if you wanted to, you could add naive bays or any of the ones that we just saw. And last thing I'd like to point out is the metric. 
by default, it's actually going to judge the best classifier off of the F1 score. I changed it to accuracy here um, just because I like to see the accuracy. And when we use our utility functions to figure out which the best classifier is, this is how it's going to judge them. So while all the eval metrics will be recorded for all of our classifiers, um, it's helpful to put some thought into which one you want to do. So now you've saved your configuration file. Let's go back to our Ubuntu command prompt and we're ready to set up. So first thing we're going to type is Python enter data.py. All right. So um, now that this has run, I can see that I, it is in fact pointing to the right CSV file. So that's always a good indicator. And the important thing to take away here is our data run ID, which is one in this case. So every time I run this enter data, it's going to create a different data run. And we need to know the ID so we can link back to the appropriate experiments. But for now, um, I think I'll only be running this one. So we move on to the next step of Python worker.py. Now when I hit enter, we can see the actual classifiers being run and trained and we'll get the output to see how they're doing. So it's moving a little too fast here to fully appreciate what all this output is doing. This CSV file is pretty small, but when you run with your own data, it'll probably be a little bit slower and you can see, oh, it's tuning to KNN, the parameters it's using, and it also lets us know what's the best date classifier so far. All right, now that it's done running, um, we can see the classifier budget has run out. That means that it's trained all the classifiers that we budgeted for and our data run is ended and there's no data runs found, which means there's no other data runs in the queue. So that means that we're all good to go. And so let's go ahead and investigate how we can look at these results. We're gonna have to do a little bit of setup and manipulation in PyCharm to make it work. I couldn't, I didn't bother trying to find the virtual environment. I created it in Ubuntu. And so I created a new one. And so that means you kind of have to install the packages again. But if you right click on ATM code, and go mark directory as source root, then it'll helpfully offer to install all the packages you need. And um, it might be a time consuming process, but if you just let it run, it'll really help things move a little bit smoother. In addition, we're also gonna mark the ATM BTB scripts folder as sources folders. So this helps all of our paths line up and it allows us to run the code. And one final alteration we'll have to make is in the utilities file in the scripts directory, which is a very helpful file indeed. It kind of gives us an example of available methods. I need to add from ATM import project root, as well as classifier status on line 12. I know this seems like a lot of hoops to jump through, um, but hopefully it'll be apparent why this might be more helpful. You can probably run these from the command line the same way. I sometimes just like to use an IDE. And so assuming all this is set up, let's look at how we can use some of my favorite utilities methods that are provided, mainly these print statements. So you could print the hyperparameter summary, which will give the results, basically the logs of what we're seeing, the summary. My favorite is print method summary. And so if I go ahead and run this, We can see that we get a method, all three of our methods, if you recall. It lets us know how many of those classifiers it tuned for us, if any of them made an error, and the best classifier. So let's consider our KNN method. Our best classifier used six neighbors, Manhattan distance, weights, uh, different algorithm. These are all the scikit-learn parameters that are available to you. And so with this data, you can go ahead and set up scikit-learn however um, you would have done it before. But now you can have a lot more confidence in the parameters that you decide to use. And one last thing before we go, you can also interact with our database just like you would with any SQLite database. I'm going to narrow it down to the top five metrics. And we're going to keep track of this in a list. So then we can open up that metrics file and look at how our top classifier is working. Ran very quickly for us. 
Now if we come up here, this is for the best classifier. I can see all the evaluation metrics which were saved um, under the test key. And if I scroll up here, we should see one, two, three, four, and five sets of metrics. These are the metrics for each cross-fold validation, which can be really helpful when you're exploring what to do. If we go back to my GitHub page, which again, which will be linked in the bottom below, there is a cookbook directory. And right now, it only has these two scripts that I used in this video. However, in the future, I hope to add additional simple, um, simple Python codes that illustrate how to interact with ATM, maybe a little bit smoother. And if you do use ATM, especially if you're getting a publish, if you're using it for publications, do be sure to cite it on their GitHub page. They lay out all the handy information, including the citing references. And so with that, I just want to say thank you as always for stopping by, and I hope you have fun exploring ATM.